Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back for another video. Today, we are going to talk about a fifth potential catalyst that could and maybe will send Bitcoin much higher. If you like this content, smash up that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section. So what do I mean by a fifth catalyst? Um, here, here's, let, let me just lay out my basic thesis for the remainder of this bull run. And it's simply this, I do not believe that on, on the bullish side, I do not believe that $69,000 was the peak for Bitcoin for the cycle or $4,800 for Ethereum. All bets are off for pretty much everything else. We could, we could certainly see higher new highs for the entire crypto market. But for Bitcoin and Ethereum, my level of confidence is very high that $69,000 was not the peak for Bitcoin and $4,800 was not the peak for Ethereum until the next halving in 2024, the next Bitcoin halving in 2024. But on the, on the, on the bearish side, I don't even want to call it the bearish side, but on the other hand, here's what I think has to happen for Bitcoin to go above $69,000 to go to six figures for Ethereum to go to five figures. Maybe I think we need some kind of a catalyst that will send prices much higher. So I have identified, and I believe that one of the, at least one of those catalysts will come in the next two years because the next Bitcoin halving is going to be in March or April of 2024. So we have about two years and I believe that it'll happen, you know, before two years, I think maybe in a year, maybe even less than that. Um, I don't think it's going, we're going to have to wait until 2024 to see new, new high prices. And so what are those potential catalysts? I've laid out one, a, a Bitcoin spot ETF getting approved in the United States. I've done my math. I've, I've compared it to the uh, purpose Bitcoin ETF in Canada. They're continued, continuing to stack sats. They're at 33,000 Bitcoin in their holdings. And I believe that a United States spot Bitcoin ETF would add something between 15 and 20 times the amount of Bitcoin to their holdings, causing a major supply crunch, causing the price to go much higher. And so that's number one. Number two is ETH 2.0. I, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to say that I, I don't, it's, it's really difficult to try to time when ETH 2.0 is going to happen, if it's going to happen. There, there are some question marks as to whether or not that's going to happen. But if it does happen, that is super bullish for Ethereum. And I could see it lifting the entire crypto market. And so Bitcoin spot ETF, ETH 2.0, the Fed turning dovish, on raising interest rates, which I believe is probably the most likely to happen in 2022. So we're, we've seen, we saw high inflation, high CPI numbers starting in November around 7%. We saw this, the Fed start to turn hawkish and what are they gonna do? They're gonna raise rates. And so I've seen estimates that they're gonna price in nine interest rates. I think that's nonsense. This is my area of expertise. I think what's going to happen is that they're going to see things start to crumble. I mean, are things starting to crumble right now? And that the, the pressure is going to, especially in, a, in an election year, is going to be to prop up the economy. Right now, the pressure is greater to handle inflation. At some point, I think the pressure is going to be greater to prop up this house of cards known as the American economy. And so they will turn dovish, in my opinion, and that is going to be a pretty big catalyst that's going to inject more confidence back into the market, more false confidence back into the market and send the prices much higher. I believe that's most likely. And then also, if, if Ripple were to win the SEC suit, their SEC suit, we should all be rooting for Ripple to win that suit. So if they win or if they, um, if they settle and just get a slap on the wrist, I think that's going to be very bullish for XRP. And if it's bullish for XRP, that can certainly lift the market. Litecoin has lifted the market. There are... One pod, one major positive thing happening for one cryptocurrency that's a that's a, at least a somewhat big player can lift the entire market. I think Ripple winning that suit would be huge, not only for ISO twenty oh two two cryptos, but for uh, for the rest of the market. And so, fifth catalyst here is a potential fifth catalyst, and it's simply this: Ukraine. The Ukraine is accepting donations in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, and in Tether. And as of right now, in two days, they've gotten $12 million worth of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether. And 
So here's the the amazing thing that I'm that I'm seeing with this the 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 thing that gets me very excited for right now. You know, all those other catalysts may potentially take shape over a period of months or years, but as of right now, this is something that I'm I'm, I'm just processing on a macro scale what this could do for the entire crypto market. And here, here's what I'm here's what, what I'm thinking, what I'm going through right now as far as in my mind is crypto has for years had this perception that it's something that money launderers do terrorists it's to do to fund terrorism and all that all that stuff but when the when the rubber hits the road what are we seeing we're seeing that crypto is by far the best option for I'm getting notification. I'm not even, it doesn't matter. You can read my notifications. I don't care, but it's by far the best option because you can transfer millions, if not billions of dollars around the world instantly. And they can, there's no borders. There's no customs checks. There's nothing. This is, I mean, could, could you imagine if Ukraine tried to raise money in gold or even in us dollars there, there are stops. There are ways to prevent them from receiving the dollar from receiving, obviously from receiving gold, that would be a nightmare, but there's no stops here. There, there's no way to stop them from receiving donations. And this is not, whether you're on Russia's side or Ukraine's side, that's not a political commentary. It's just a matter of looking at the facts and seeing, yes, Russia, sorry, Ukraine, the Ukraine, is very easily gaining access to, to funds. And what would be the alternative for them? The alternative is, you know, during times of war, countries normally turn to taxes or bond sales to raise money for military campaigns. That takes time. That takes a lot of time. But this is instant. It's within a matter of seconds. But the Ukraine has bolstered its war chest with millions of dollars in cryptocurrency donations, crowdfunded in two days by strangers responding to a tweet from the country's official Twitter as the country continues to defend against a Russian invasion. And all eyes are on Ukraine right now, on the Ukraine. All eyes around the world are on the Ukraine right now. And I know that other countries are seeing this and seeing here's a way to protect ourselves by having a Bitcoin wallet address, by having an Ethereum wallet address, by having a Tether wallet address. Here's a way that we can protect ourselves. Let's be proactive about this and start stacking some sats and start stacking, stacking some ETH. And we'll see, we'll see what comes with it. I'm not saying that this is going to happen in a matter of days, but we'll see. I think that this, this has the potential of accelerating the then suddenly, you know what I mean? Gradually, then suddenly, this has the potential to accelerate nations. You know, this 2020 was the year of the institution. 2021 as well was the year of the institution plus El Salvador, 2022, 2023, 2024, could be the year of nations, of sovereign states getting in on this. So I'm keeping my eyes on that. And as far as price action is concerned, I mean, all right, today is a good day, you know, lots of green on coin360.com, good to see. I really tend to think that the only reason why we went back down into the 30s, the big reason, was because of the threat of Russia invading the Ukraine. I said it on my podcast. I said it during my live stream last week. Um, it wasn't in the charts until all of a sudden it was in the charts. The charts were telling the news because last weekend, you know, CME futures, the, the there was a CME futures gap, but what we saw last weekend was a lot of volatility and the volatility during the weekends is very unusual. And I remember I went to bed on Friday night, at least, you know, in the United States on Friday night. And I woke up in the middle of the night. I often wake up in the middle of the night, you know, I have kids and stuff like that. And what I saw was a $2,000 dip within a matter of a few hours. And in my mind, the immediate thing I thought was the, the charts are pricing something in right now. And what were they pricing in? In my opinion, it was the invasion. Yeah, the charts were pricing in an invasion because weekend activity is generally very boring and it's magnetized to the CME futures close. We always fill in a CME, CME futures gap. We did it within a matter, matter of hours just this past weekend, you know, just yesterday, last night or, or this morning. Actually, yeah, this morning. 
And so we're back in the 40s. We're back pretty much where we belong. There was uh, there was some activity that I've seen. Um, I'm not going to pull up any charts, but one thing that I did see is that when we first got to $45,000 um, in late January, early February, a couple weeks ago, that whales, that wallet addresses cooled off on their buying. And so we saw very eager buying from wallets of all sizes when Bitcoin got down to $32,000. When it first got down to the lower 40s, when it got down to the 30s, we saw lots of accumulation from all the way down from shrimps and minnows to the largest whales. And then that cooled off in the 40s, but we went right back down to the 30s. And again, we saw lots of accumulation from wallets of all sizes. And that's why I was saying when we first went back down into the thirties or sorry, with the second time when we went back down in the thirties, I was saying that I, I think it's a good time to start, start nibbling away at this for Bitcoin and Ethereum only. Um, and so I, I still believe that if we go back down into the thirties, uh, then I would say it's, it's time again to, to start nibbling away. $30,000, $35,000 Bitcoin. It was there last Friday. I thought I, I said on my TikTok, I thought that was a great buying opportunity. Or did I say that on Thursday? It doesn't matter. You guys know that. So as far as the, the, the short term is concerned, we're seeing the 21 week EMA that is now it's right around that $45,000 range. That is now at a level where that is the next big barrier. If we can break through the 21 week EMA, hold that as support. I think that's going to be very bullish for another move higher, but we are going, I think the, the first move that we will see there is a firm rejection at the 21 week EMA. I've said this before and I'll say it again. So right, right under $45,000 is where the 21 week EMA is right now. It's, it's a clear, I am not a trader, but that is a very clear, easy, easy place to open a short and make a quick scalp. I'm talking about hours or maybe a couple days, but a very easy place. We will very likely get rejected there. I, and I, I'm as close to saying 100%. I never say 100%, but that's as close as I could possibly give it. The first move up there, we're gonna get rejected. After that, we'll see. You know, maybe maybe we have the juice, The especially with the sovereign state potential adoption happening here to, to drive the price higher quicker. I hope so. But again, you know, you, I've been preaching, I've been banging this drum. There is a ton of resistance, all of these Fibonacci retracement levels, there's going to be a ton of resistance along the way. And so we've got to be patient. We've got to grind and we've got to see this through to, um, over the next several months. I really do think it's going to take several months aside from a major catalyst happening. So again, personally, if I were adding to my stacks right now, I would mostly only be adding Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, Luna, oh my good, Luna looks fantastic right now. Um, there's some other cryptocurrencies that I do have my eyes on that maybe they did bottom out. But right now, given all of the instability, I mean, what happens if Russia, from what I've heard, if Russia were to, uh, to take over Kiev, that's going to be very bearish. What happens with China and Taiwan? There's so many questions that still need to be answered. I personally would rather play it safer by buying assets that I know will one day be, you know, one day, maybe even soon be worth much more than they are right now. And my confidence is in Bitcoin and Ethereum. My confidence is low for pretty much everything else. You know, lower meaning like, you know, 50, 50 or, or a little higher, or a little lower, something like that. So that's how I'm playing it. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. I will be back throughout the week. I did my taxes last week on Friday and Saturday. And I didn't cry as much as I thought I would. So I guess that's a good thing. But um, I will be here throughout the week. I'm working really hard on my business right now, trying to do whatever I can to make more money to invest in crypto. And so, um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful week. And I will most certainly be seeing you in another video. Peace.